We're now joined by Hatting ESP Ashraf Ali. Good morning, sir. Good to see you. Good morning, sir. And how is your day so far? Thus far, not surprising. <laughs> I think that's the most appropriate way of putting it. I'm going good. How is your day thus far? Yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting. It's just, it's, we, had a, we had a long weekend. Um, we didn't have much incidents over the weekend, so that was a positive. But well, we didn't? Yeah. How is sports day? Sports, 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 fine. Sports, sports, fine. Now. <laughs> and what's, uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, commissioner of police raising herself as excellent? Well, I, I guess the commissioner would have um, considered everything, uh, what she may have been implementing, and what the what the results were. And in her opinion, she believed that she did an excellent job. Um, what is your opinion? My opinion is she has been doing um, a good job. Um, but my opinion might be as be one of many. Yes. All right. Um, like everything else, um, the assessment, she made a statement, and the assessment will be done by the appropriate agencies when that time reaches to determine whether or not the, it is effective enough. Um, what you're seeing right now is, in, in, if, if you look at it from face value, the number of Woundings, the number of um, homicides, the shootings, the robberies. I mean, it's not correlating with what the public might say, excellent job, right? Um, because of the, the fact that there is a lot of um, different and variant type of crimes that are taking place that we are all still grappling with. Um, as police officers, we still live in Trinidad and Tobago, so we still have families here that we still do have to consider that as part of our um, um, Policing, right? Um, notwithstanding that, over the over the weekend, um, in the last couple of weeks, we did some good job in Eastern Division, where they recovered the AR-15. Yes. Yes. But, um, but what was very interesting is that the AR-15 was found in the room of a 17-year-old. Now, persons need to understand that families need families and parents need to understand that. These are serious situations. Having an AR-15 together with the other um, things like marijuana and everything like that, there are some consequences. The legal consequence, you can be arrested or you will be arrested for possession of the, the weapon. You have to go to court. Um, you have to pay for lawyers. And, and, and those are additional costs attached to defending yourself. Mm -hmm. The f entire family could have been arrested at the same time. Really? Right, because it all depends when you go to execute a warrant in a house where the firearm is located. Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't accept responsibility, automatically is, if, is somebody, in the, everybody will be arrested and detained because there is no ownership of the weapon. It was found where everybody had access. Let me ask you, um, in, in your opinion, based off of your experience, would you say that parents are actually protecting their children whom they know are committing wrong deeds who are committing crimes? For example, this was found in the room of a 17-year-old. We do not know whether or not it truly belongs to him, whether it belongs to another member of the family, and I'm sure the investigation will actually conclude that. But do you think that parents are actually protecting their children whom are committing wrong acts? Well. Many parents like to, to de believe that their children is always, um, as you say, good boy, good girl, mm -hmm. right? Never involved in um, anything wrong. Fair enough. I mean, as a parent, I would like, I, I, I would, un I understand how they would, um, they would view things. But then you have to look at the consequences. Mm. I did discuss some of the consequences from a legal perspective from a law enforcement and legal perspective. What about the other consequences? Do you think these parents understand that that AR-15 belongs to someone mm. who, it's an illegal item, so it's a, so somebody, some gang member, some, some gang or somebody, you're keeping it for. Do you think that it's, it's okay now to say, well, okay, we lost that firearm, you don't have to pay for it? Somebody has to pay the, pay, pay the price. It may not be the 17-year-old young man. Oh, it very well it could be. Could be. Even if but then somebody, has to, somebody may or may not have to get the money 
to to deal with that. So you know you have the lawyer fees now, you have the the, 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 the bail money that you have to look to go and get, you have to put up your house and all of that to get, to get um, and we have to have proper land deed and all that to get bail. That is one side of the legal aspect of it. What about when now we have to pay for the firearm? Where are you going to get that money to pay for the firearm? Is it now that you're going to recycle now that you have to go back into illegal activities to pay for a legal gun, an illegal gun that you was keeping for Ill illegal purposes? Mm -hmm. These are some of the circumstances that parents need to really, really take cognizance of. That, okay, you know you're a child. You know you're a child I'm with certain individuals. You know the type of individuals a child I'm with. Right? He or she may not be involved directly, but the mere fact that a weapon was kept in the house of an individual. Do you think a lack of good parenting is one of the major causes or factors that contribute to crime? And, and that has been some of the conversation for the, couple, for the last couple of years. Uh, so how, how we reach the situation where we're talking about parenting, parenting from, a, from varying, um, from aspects of, varying aspects of the, the, the whole situation. Um, even in schools, right? Um, I mean, we were not discussing um, the aspect of number of narcotics was found in a location and, and the value of those narcotics. The, yeah. quest, the question is that when you have narcotics or illegal items right, kept in your location, mm -hmm. somebody has to pay for those items being taken away by because law enforcement. It, uh, the irony, of course, is that's a trope with regards to police shows where you confiscate the items because it was being held, and, and there are a lot of consequences for people because of that. But it's not actually a message that I hear too often with regards to, not like in a fictitious, fictitious sense you're watching a show, but like you hear from stakeholders, law enforcement, wherever, not just Trinidad, I'm talking all around the world with regards to um, the dangers of crime and the threat of crime and, and, and what to tell young people. Well, one of the things, what you just said there, that warning, I haven't really heard it that often. It's like, look, you get involved and things don't turn out right. You will have to not just pay the consequences to the law, but you will also have to bear the illegal consequences to the, to the criminals as well. And I, I don't know if that might be enough to get them to understand, listen, this is a lose-lose. The risk isn't really worth it to you. And do they have programs? Because as much as I have not heard it, maybe it is out there. Do they have programs that are going to actually give young people that harsh reality? And there, there, there are some, um, there are some programs, but the majority, there, there's not, I don't think there's enough by different agencies involved in law enforcement and community related activities that can, that, that, that sings this home. Um, I've, I've been listening to some of the, um, the ex-prisoners um, who came out of prison and, and, and spoke. Right, and they, they came out, and, and when you listen to some of the media's um, radio talk shows, and they came out openly and spoke about the cycle that they got themselves involved in, and how hard and difficult it was it to get out of it. That, that's just one aspect of it. But once you get in or start the process, it's a difficult way to get out because you're always already in debt. This family is in debt mm. to AR-15 and other items. Mm -hmm. Right, like so many other um, situations. The, 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 the but to what extent could the, the police use this case of getting to the root source of this AR-15? Because as much as it's been confiscated and the 17-year-old um, has been arrested, and you have suggested that the entire family could have been charged. Um, I mean, is the Transvaal Police Service actually going to utilize this? Because you're mentioning they now own money for an AR-15. Get to the source of where this illegal weapon came from. They do, in fact, um, once a weapon, any firearm has been confiscated, it is traced. Together with, it is traced in collaboration with the international um, agencies that work in partnership with us, and the firearms are traced to their origins. Mm -hmm. I would not mention the origins of those. 
No need to mention those, the origins those, but where, where they came from, but it's not in it's not in Trinidad. It's it's out of Trinidad, and there has been there has been um, persons who are indicating where they came from. It my, was illegally my, smuggled. Then. Illegally smuggled. Well, my bigger the concern country. is have uh, if that is the case, have we actually sourced the illegal smugglers, arrested and charged them? No, it's, inter it's international. It's cross borders, so. Trinidad and Tobago Police Service will be working in collaboration with other agencies to treat with certain situations. The most recent was that of the, the most recent one was published in, 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 in the US where um, persons were found um, guilty of trying to export or did in fact um, attempt to export firearms into Trinidad and Tobago. Right? Um, and these are some of the things that these type of investigations go. Now, persons don't believe that the consequences are there. They're only mm -hmm. speaking about the consequences from the policing perspective, right? I would say that the policing perspective or the legal perspective is the least of your issue because you still have an opportunity to get a defense, to get a lawyer, go before a court, right? And plead your case. But after all of that, that AR-15 that you lost, because as far as the criminal element is concerned, you lost my item. You lost a weapon. You owe me a weapon. Mm -hmm. you, that IOU don't go like, if you, take, you know, if you go to a bank and pay an IOU, you know. They're not coming to levy or, or send a bailiff by your house. The other, the type of bailiff they're going to send, the type of person they're sending there is not a bailiff. And we just um, had an incident last week where a 12-year-old got injured and, and left in a critical condition. Uh, I haven't seen any updates myself. Um, but we've, s we've seen children be gunned down. We assume, of course, collateral damage. These were young children. It's hard yeah, to imagine that they exactly. wouldn't talk anything. But now, why would a 17-year-old think that they will treat him like a child? Why would society now, should we assume that criminality will respect, well, he's not an adult yet? Yeah, um, for yeah, all intents and, and, and purposes, if they could gun down uh, um, um, small children, they could do with whatever they, they feel to do. And I think we see, is it fair to say that we see those consequences? That's why we have so much gang killings and shootings yeah, and reprisals. And, and these are some of the areas that have to be considered um, when the investigation is taking place. Because we have one line of investigation, which is solely from the prosecutional aspect of it. But then we, are, we have the other aspect of how we can mitigate the fallout of it, right? Um, and the, the mitigation, the, the, how we mitigate this is, is, is how we send messages out, how we start to communicate with the youths, how we start to communicate within the community as to what the consequences of doing these things for criminals. And it's not in Trinidad alone. You see it across the world, right? Um, you, you see it in, 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 in Colombia. In, in recently, I, I, I saw a video circulating in, um, in Haiti where gangs, when gang members, mm -hmm. were a very graphic yes. um, yeah. video where they actually had a number of gang members um, on the street that was killed on the streets, right? And executed. Executed on the streets. And, 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 and those are gang-related incidents. The, 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 the incident with the home invasion where the, th where the men in the family, three men were killed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we don't know what the motivations were. Perhaps it could be something like this. Over the weekend, um, last week, there was an article where, where there was a, 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 someone was shot in their, in their home and the victim reported that when they got up, they saw a man standing over him and shot him. And he and his girlfriend, his girlfriend got up, um, um, wasn't injured. But just the mere fact that the question is, what was the motive for, for someone coming into your house, standing over you, um, and you are sleeping and a fire at you, just wake up and a fire at you, something would have caused this to happen. And these are some of the... Let me ask you a question, Acting ESP. How is it so easy here in TNT for criminal elements to be armed with these weapons and these high-powered weapons? How is it so easy? How have we allowed this to happen? And, and exactly. So, so the, the, that, that, that's the biggest question that everybody is trying to answer. What well, could the TTPS answer? The TTPS did, in fact, answer some of the questions. You may not, persons may not like the fact that they may not like the answer. We have a lot of porous borders. And who's responsible for these porous borders? 
well, we have agencies responsible for it. And, they, and those, some of the agencies have their challenges at the same time. But then we as citizens take advantage of situations to allow ourselves to get involved. Now, how do you, how do you leave an island right, to bring in contraband, illegal weapons? By boats. Mm -hmm. Many of our, um, we have multiple um, locations of, um, um, along our coast that persons utilize. But coming up rivers, for example, the Carney River, that's not going to be the duty of the Coast Guard at that point. Isn't that going to be the duty of the trans Police Service? Well, now it, now it is. But previously, without the, the, the Marine Introduction Unit, it was not that of the trans Tobago Police Service. But now that we have the Marine Interjection Unit, so which, is, which, is, which is a small unit, right? But at the same time, it, it will cover that area. I mean, does it even make sense having this unit if one is such a small unit where it actually cannot really, it doesn't have the capability of dealing with this situation? No. And two, doesn't trans Police Service bear responsibility if there is indeed a unit, and yet still some of the other, it's not proving to be successful? No. It all depends on how you want to, want to view success. The Marine Interdiction, Interdiction Unit is not going to take away the rules and responsibility of the Trinidad Tobago Coast Guard. Right? And if the perception is that, 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 is, that, is, that is what it's going to be, that's a wrong perception. Right? We do it because remember, the, there's a unit as a compared to our entire um, service. service right? Or part of a service which falls on the Trinidad Tobago Defense Force. That is just one aspect of it. That we have other areas where we have legal ports of entry, and you mentioned, we all mentioned it earlier, and they had the conversation of legal ports of entry where items are coming through legal ports of entry, right? And it's not, it's not new. We have, we have records, we have evidence, and we have evidence that items did in fact come through. We contra um, contradicted, I'm sorry, confiscated a lot of these items, and unfortunately, um, the public has not been brought up to speed because investigations is still in, um, being conducted and the nature of the investigation is very sensitive, as you mentioned earlier. <laughs> With regards to illegal firearms, because I guess one of the things that people are concerned about is the fact that, look, one firearm is a big deal, but estimates have been given out in, in the tens of thousands, but they're just Estimates. First of all, could you just describe to us very quickly, you know, how these estimates are, are, are brought about and how reliable are they? Well, okay. So, no, no, I don't, I don't want to be quoted as stating that this is this is the exact way that they do it. Um, but I could just give a projection. Um, over the years, we would have seized a number of firearms. So let's say that we seize twenty firearms just for the discussion purposes, and we have twenty incidents. Involved in involving um, weapons, mm -hmm. right? So they could very well be combined again and say that number of illegal weapons that we have out there would have been forty because we recovered twenty and still have twenty what was involved in shootings. It may not my my my, my judgment right now my uh, or my this is just an understanding of how they go through it, but then there's there's a little more analytical work that will be done to come up with the figures. Right, so just basically that's how, how you start the, 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 the analysis. Because we've heard an estimate, um, I think it was maybe last year or year before, and you hear these estimates every now and then, where it will be in the thousands. And I know that we have not had a murder rate that is known of in the thousands just yet, or even like a shooting crime rate. So, so, so right, so we also have woundings, shootings, that is also um, collated to give you the figure because those are incidents that involve a firearm, mm -hmm. right? So if it's involving a firearm, it's an illegal firearm, and that's a firearm that we, um, we wouldn't even um, be able to recover as yet, right? So the ones that we recover, um, so if it's at, uh, let's say, a thousand, right? That's a thousand weapons, illegal weapon that was already existing that we knew of. Now, the other shootings might be 300, 400. So when you add all together, the estimate could be 1,300 illegal weapons that was existing that we knew of. Now, now to cut to the chase, earlier on we spoke about the, the testimony that the commissioner gave 
in which case there were a couple of years where it was, was ex ex excessively high, in my opinion, where you're talking about tens of thousands of, of firearms and millions, tens of millions in, in one case of ammunition being imported um, by gun dealers to sell. Um, so I just have to ask, generally speaking, is there any risk when that amount, because I believe they got approval, this is 2020, 2021 especially, is there any risk for any of that ending up in the hands of criminals coming in through the front door and being, you know, it's not necessarily smuggled in, but it goes into the black market channels once right. it gets so, there. So, so from the firearm dealer's perspective, um, and the police service does in fact have a check and balance that they do audit the firearm dealers. Um, once you, remember, once you have a firearm and you have ammunition, you run the risk of losing those firearms. And there are a number of persons who had legal weapons mm. who lost their weapons. If they lost their weapons, they also lost ammunition with it that was stolen. Those would have been in the hand, those could have been gone in the hands of um, criminals from a criminal act. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The possibility, the possibility I'm saying, was, there will always be the possibilities of persons trying to sell um, their legal firearms, mm -hmm. um, legal ammunition, I think right? But, but in, in, if you look at it, um, I, I, for me personally, I would say that there is a small possibility anything like that happening, there's always a possibility of those things happening. Just like, sorry, just like where we have found um, Fire um, ammunition mm -hmm. belonging to the, to, to the, the defense, defense force. force and the police, so, and allegations were made. I can say that the Trent Tobago Police Service does, in fact, have a check and balance. So, you're not necessarily force. alarmed like I am just at the share, I mean, the outlier of 2020 and 2021 because it was any tens of millions. No, I, I, I'm not as um, alarmed with that aspect of it. You, you okay. have to understand acting ASP, supposed to try and calm down the citizens and tell them it's, oh, it's okay, it's going to be okay. You know, the TTPS is on the ground. He would not express alarm. But I... I, I, I would be as truthful as possible. <laughs> but um, also, yes. I, I just wanted to, to, to raise the point that, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, if, uh, if an individual, a, a legal firearm uh, user who has a FUL, mm. If their gun is stolen from their place, they could be charged. Right? Yes, an investigation is in fact yeah. launched um, in this circumstance. So if it is lost, um, once you lose a weapon, As even if it is a I lose stolen, it, it's stolen, I right. lose it. So, right. So if you lose, if you lose your, your firearm, an investigation is conducted to determine the circumstance. If it was if it was lost um, tr uh, via a criminal act. It still has an investigation because the investigation will determine whether or not you had the firearm and whether or not you had it secured, secured enough yeah. right. in accordance with the firearm. No, but if I literally just had a firearm, I don't own one, but say I have one and I'm in the course of the day, I lose it. Then and I you it. should not that, have had a gun in the first place. Well, exactly. That also could be an offense. Of course, because exactly. it's an offense to be... It should be an offense to be stupid. It should be an offense to be responsible. <laughs> well, with a firearm, I, yes. yes. So I mean, it, it, falls, it falls under the investigation where you can go down the li line of negligence. And once it has been proven, then we have other